good afternoon viewers welcome to this session the topic for our discussion today is file handling in c programming so till now we had seen the basic components of the c programming the control statements arrays functions in uh, c programming then structures in c programming pointers in c programming now we will see another important topic that is file handling in c programming i am professor vivi subramaniam director school of computer information sciences taking you to this particular session on uh, file handling in c programming so this particular topic as i told you is very important in the sense that it will be helpful for your mcs 011 as well as mcs 021 that is data structures then it is also very much useful for your analysis of algorithms that is in the third semester of mca so till now whenever we are giving the inputs for the program while running after after compilation so we are providing it through the program or else we are asking the user to key in the data the prompt is through the print up statement in c programming that enter two numbers and afterwards in order to scan those two values we will write scan up function and then the program will obviously act upon the values that the user has presented and then later on the program will keep on running and then it the required in the output will be produced so this is for the small programs suppose in the commercial practice what else you require user may not be prompted to enter the values the inputs however it will be taken from a file that is the source file so it is very much necessary to keep the data in a permanent storage that is the hard drive so suppose if you take the case of structures programming in that programming we had discussed two or three important examples that is an employee structure meant in later on to calculate the pay and other uh, welfare of the employees and in the second example we had seen the student data the student structures where in which later on in the part of the program the marks calculation the print of the total then average and the grade so for these kinds of things huge records are the input sources like a class may contain 60 students where in which there may be five subjects and then 60 into 5 there will be several records including the name enrollment number and the other accessory things so these can't be given by a user upon a prompt so which is the best method so it may be available it may be made available in the form of a file so here comes the file concept so the the data to feed into the program will be from the source file so obviously all those records will be scanned is and then necessary out, output may be appearing on the screen or else on the printer so it would be very much difficult as you might be understanding by this time it will be very difficult to handle large volume of data that is needed by the programs and after execution of the program it may be a process where in which the screen may not be sufficient the single display of the screen may not be sufficient and it may scroll down so we may be in a position to divert that output also into a separate file that is the output file which may be taken 
the printout in a later on time or else the source the the file the inputs coming from a source file after the calculations are done by the program may be diverted to a printer to print the output values so c supports the concepts of concept of file through which the data can be stored in the disk or secondary storage device so separate files will be maintained for the inputs where in which the program will pick up the file take the source inputs execute and displace the output so normally a file is a collection of data or text placed on the disk so it will be identified with a name dot extension file name so a sequential other definition we can provide here is it is a sequential stream of bytes ending with the end of file marker so the start of the file and then there will be end of file marker e o f end of the file marker so that is the delimiter for a c file so till then the bytes will be stream and the end of the file will be e o f so when the file is opened the stream is associated with the file whether we are in whether we want to input some values into the file or else whether we want to read some values from the file so both the things are possible appending is possible let us see in the due course of time what can what all the operations can be done using these files so by default these file uh, three files and their streams are automatically opened when the program execution became uh, begins that is first one is the standard input stream second one is the standard output stream and the standard errors stream so whenever the file is opened all these three program executions begin the standard input stream begins output stream begins the standard error also will be begins so c will support two types of files one is the text file and other is the binary file so these particular uh, text files as we can see everything is stored in terms of text and the binary it is in the zeros and ones so for a, for each and every line you may be seeing in the program that a new line character will be there that is the end of line but for the end of file it is eof so text file it is nothing but the whole items are the text items and then a binary file contains data that was written in the same format but it is direct it is not in the form of text however in the form of binary values that is zeros and ones so how to work with files let us start first of all the declaration part is very much important so how to declare in order to use a file or in order to create a file in our program so that is important so the declaration goes in such a way that file is the keyword that is a pointer star fptr here for example i had taken a pointer variable as fptr that itself is telling uh, telling the program that fptr is a pointer variable which points to a file in the earlier class we had seen the pointers so in order to point to an integer you wrote int star ptr where in which ptr is the pointer variable which points to a int or else ptr is a pointer variable which is storing an integers integer values address so here you can see the difference we are using a term or else a keyword called as file so fptr is a pointer variable which is pointing towards a file so when working with files you need to declare a pointer of type file that thing you have to remember as and when you require many files to work with all those things needs to be have a file pointer suppose file suppose if you want to work with three files then you declare three file 
pointer variables f i l e star f 1 comma star f 2 comma star f 3 f 1 point to the to the first uh, file then f 2 pointing to the second as well f 3 pointing to the third so this declaration you must understand is needed for communication between the file and the program so this is must in the declaration part whenever you declare the variables whenever you declare the structures whenever you declare the functions there then itself the first part we have to declare the files whenever you want to use them during your course of programming then the possible file operations on this particular files are one is creating a file suppose if you don't have a file you can create a file and then you can input the values in the file or else records in the file and then close the file so first thing is creating a file opening an existing file that is already some one file exists and we want to read or write or append so all this possible all these file operations are possible then reading from a file writing to a file moving to a specific location in a file that is we want to hit some point of hit some point or else location in an existing file that is also possible and then closing a file so all these file operations are possible during our programming then how to open a file so there are several functions associated with these file operations one by one we will see like how to create a file how to store a file how to read a file how to rewind a file all these things contains the ready-made inbuilt functions and what exactly are the syntax that we have to follow that we will see in the due course of time. First of all, we will concentrate on how to open a file. So opening a file is performed using the file open function. So you can see here F O P E N that is the function you have to write in order to open a file. So what else you have to write? The exact syntax is so file you will be declaring a file pointer for that file and that particular pointer is equal to then write f open function with the arguments within double quotes file to be opened and then mode you can see two arguments are must the first argument is in order to specify the location and the second order second argument is to mention the mode what are modes read is a mode write is a mode append is a mode so these are the three modes like whether if you want to read only the inputs from the file then you have to select the mode as r whether you have to write something into the file you have to open the file in write mode w r i t e that is write mode suppose if you want to append the contents from the end earlier it was some eof is there so from that point onwards if you want to append the contents you have to use append mode so you can see the example here f open within the double quotes you had mentioned the complete address along with the like file name and then the second argument here we are passing is the write mode w r i t write mode so file opening modes as i told you one is r mode that is read mode the second is write mode and then the third one is a that is append mode so when you select the r as the second argument it searches the file if the file is opened successfully then it it is loaded to the memory sets up the pointer the pointer declaration that is f f i l e file star p t r or star star f p t r whatever you are uh, mentioning in the declaration part that particular pointer will be set up as a pointer which points to the first character in the file and then what else end of file is the delimiter to that particular file if the file cannot be opened then it will it searches the file you have to put the mode as w within double quotes as the second argument if the file exists it concerns it its contents are overwritten 
If the file doesn't exist, a new file is created and then returns null if unable to open the file. Then another mode that we want to we will discuss is the append mode. So earlier write means it is overwriting. So append means it will continue from the end that was existing earlier. So it searches whenever we put the second argument as a it searches the file. If the file is opened successfully f open loads it into memory and sets up the pointer that points to the last character in it. So because we are here using the append, append means it continues from the end point earlier existing. So if the file doesn't exist, a new file is created and returns null if unable to open the file. So what else are the modes we can have? Those are R plus. If is opened successfully, f open loads it into the memory and sets up a pointer which points to the first character in it returns null if unable to open the file then there is w plus and then a plus so these are the three six variety of uh, modes that we can insert as a second argument in the file open function next coming to the binary files those are meant for text files and even if you see here you can write RT also within double quotes RT also. By default if you write R it will take the text file as the by default file. If you write RT also the same thing will happen. But in case of binary file you have to specify here you can see you have to specify WB within w, double quotes whenever you want to uh, have a binary file as an input or else whenever you want to read a binary file or write a binary file or append something to the binary file obviously you have to include one character called as b in the along with the mode at the second argument of the file open function so w itself mentions a text right that is mode for a text write mode for a text but when you work with a binary file, you should write WB. Compulsorily, you should write WB within the double quotes as the second argument for the file open function. You can see here a simple example. FP is the file pointer. FP is equal to file open within braces, within double quotes. The first argument is the like file name data.dat and then here you can see in order to specify the data dot that is a binary file that too you want to open it in the right mode. So second argument is WB. So write binary. Then for read also you can see the example RB that is must you have to write B along with the mode. And then coming to the AB this is for the append fp is equal to file open data dot dat and here you can see ab that is append binary so compulsorily you have to write the b likewise r plus b and likewise r plus that is read plus and write plus also you have to use r plus b b you have to append at the end that is postfix and w plus b that is also for write plus also you have to include the b so here you can see the simple example, it is a simple example, uh, star FPTR is a pointer variable which is pointing to a file structure, FPTR is equal to file open within braces two arguments are passed, one is the file name that is abc.txt and then as we are opening .txt, so either you may write wt or else w itself is enough. Suppose if you want to work with a binary file, you could have written wb, that thing you have to remember. Then whenever you want, you open a file, one file or else if at all you are working with one or more files, obviously towards the end of the C program, you have to close the files. Whatever the files you had worked with, like one or many, 
so all the files need to be closed with a function called as f close so the both the files either it may be a text or binary the good practice of c programming obviously is when you open a file you should close that file towards the end the file should be closed after reading or writing or even appending also closing a file is performed using the f close function you can see the syntax over here you have to write f close and within the braces within the brace uh, a file pointer needs to be written like suppose f1 f2 f3 are three file pointers that we had declared at the earlier stage and we had worked during the programming part so obviously the last state, three statements before the end of the program would be f close within braces f1 then semicolon then the last before statement will be f close within braces f2 semicolon f close within braces f3 semicolon so all these files needs to be closed if at all we are working with the three files in our program so here you can see in the example FPTR is a file pointer associated with the file to be closed that needs to be mentioned so this function this f close function flushes any unwritten data for stream and then discards any unread buffer input frees in any un automatically allocated buffer and then closes the stream so the streams as we had seen the standard input stream standard output stream and then standard error stream all these streams will be freed and then closed along with the well along with this statement the close statement the return value is zero if the file is closed successfully otherwise if it is having any kind of error it will be displayed and then obviously what is the file marker evof is the file marker for any file so for f1 also evof will be there that is the lead delimiter of the file that we are about to close let us see a simple program here a simple caution statement is written if at all the file is open successfully then you can see the else part for processing otherwise you can see the if part if fp which is the pointer variable to a file if we are opening that file in the read mode is equal to null then file doesn't exist that is the simple statement that we had written in the if statement exit on zero else if it successfully opened then some processes will be continued and you can see that file pointer fp we are closing before the main program close f close within braces we have written the fp so this particular practice you have to look into while working with files whenever you open the file in read write or append mode all those files should be closed at the towards the end of the program then comes the input output using the file pointers so till now we had seen some printf statements scanf statements which we were using during our simple programs in order to tell something to the user we write we incorporate certain labels or else a kind of simple statements within double quotes enter two numbers or else enter the value of a comma b comma c so in this way we try to communicate to the user and whatever the values that the user gives after looking into the message that is passed those will be scanned or else those will be taken as the inputs and the programs will later on execute so here also if at all certain formats are required or else certain characters needs to be taken as inputs or strings directly can be taken as the input or else formatted input output functions may be taken as the uh, input output using this file pointers or else some continued block also can be taken as the input output function so associated with these four kinds of functions we can see the associated ready-madely inbuilt functions that we can 
obviously take and work with them in our C programming. Suppose in order to scan a character or else in order to read a character or else in order to write a character to a file or else in order to read a character from a file, there are certain functions available. What are those functions? We will see. Likewise, the complete string can be read using a file function. Likewise, you can put some complete string into a file or else insert a complete string into a file. So let us see what are all the functions those are available in order to play with these all four kinds of formatted things. So here you can see two functions we had mentioned one is get c put c that is get character put character. Get character is nothing but it is used to read a character from the file. So get c is that one and then in order to like write the character into the file then we will use the put c. And then you can see the syntax over here, put c in put c within brackets there are two arguments int ch comma file pointer and then int get c also directly file pointer file star strean. So let us see some examples in this program include this main program is it, it consists of two file pointers those are fp1 fp2 so a caution statement is written over there <coughs> if at all there is no file error opening the input file if at all it exists then here you can see if fp2 is equal to file open one file is there that too we are opening it and both the files we are just checking the statements and then if at all the files are available then it take, it comes out and then it will execute from the while statement otherwise it will display the message error opening input file or error opening the output file. So this program is meant to take one character from file 1 and write the same character into a new file that is fp2 that is file 2. So this is a, a simple program which copies the contents of one file into the contents of one file and stores it into a second file. So the first if statement you can see here those are the caution kind of thing wherein which if at all if the file is not open appropriate messages we are displaying error opening file input file f1 or error opening in output file f2. Suppose if that is qualified and it is coming to the else statement while end of file that is till end of file marker is encountered for fp1 that is file 1 what all needs to be done get the character one by one and put the character in fp2 that is file 2 we are getting character by character from file 1 and we are writing the character by character same character by character in file 2. You can see here please concentrate on the while statement while ch is equal that is we are capturing character by character using the function get c from file 1 and the next function is we are putting we are writing the same character whatever that is fetched from file 1 into file 2. So this is a simple program and after copying all the contents from file 1 to file 2 you can see the last statements we are closing the first file as well as we are closing the second file. So this is a good practice of C programming whenever we are working with the file concept. So then the second thing is how to work with the strings. Suppose if strings are there and if we want to capture the complete string, how to like read the complete string from a file or else how to write a complete string into the file. So earlier we had seen only character by character and here we are playing with the strings. If we want to read a whole line in the file, then each time we will need to call a character function that is character by character it will be a very difficult process. Suppose if you can capture the whole line 
at one go that will be very much convenient for you and also the execution execution speed will be increased and the performance will be increased so instead it has some io functions those are f gets and then f puts like you have get c put c here you have two functions f gets and the second fun function in order to write is f puts syntax you can see here as we have the syntax for get c put c here also for f put f, f put s f get s we have the syntax so okay there is a demo program here the first if statement is very simple this program is to read a file and count the number of lines in the file so what is the delimiter for a line that is new line character so till then you can count it as a line suppose if it consists of 80 lines in a file then the, the like 80 characters in a file so that particular thing each and every line can be captured the, with a delimiter that is end line character. So as you can see fp is a file pointer over here and we are initializing the counter with zero value and then the character string of which is been uh, assigned as 80. So we are trying to open the file in a read mode. Why? We have to read we have to check and then we have to display the number of lines in that file so no need of writing so we are just opening the file in the read mode using the file pointer fp and the first statement is the check statement like if at all the file exists or not exists if it doesn't exist appropriate uh, printf command we had given over there if at all it exists look here we had written a while statement while end of file that is file end of file within brackets fp till end of file f gets here reading string str comma 80 comma fp it reads at most 80 characters in the string that is the upper limit that we had given in a line for a line and then for each and every encounter of that uh, fp file end of file increment the counter of reading every line and then at last we are displaying the count of number of lines so this particular program is to read a file and count the number of lines in a file so here we had opened the file using only read statement there is nothing to write so we had opened this particular uh, file using the file pointer fp in read mode we had checked for the condition uh, whether the file exists or not exists if at all it exists we are using the fgets in order to capture the whole string that is existing in the line and then we are incrementing the counter whenever the new line is appearing and then it ends with the display of number of lines in the file of that particular fp then comes this third kind of thing that is formatted input and output functions so if the file contains the data in the form of digits or else float values characters strings in a formatted kind of thing so better use fprintf and fscanf as the file functions so there are two functions available for the formatted input output functions those are fprintf and fscanf so with this particular two functions whether you, if at all you want to print something into the file so you have to use fprintf if at all you want to read the formatted form of digits or float values so you can use the fscanf so the syntax remains int f scanf you can see two or more arguments are there depending upon the format that is being uh, uh, read or write both these functions return an integer indicating the number of bytes actually read or written so this is an integer we are declaring uh, 
at the top you can see and then these functions return integer indicating the number of bytes those are read, read for scanf f scanf and return for f printf so this is a simple program which opens a bank like one file is available like bank dot data that is available on your hard disk and we are opening it in the read mode and then it will read all the records and wherever the account balance is zero so those records will be printed suppose if a person's there are 100 records and only two records are having the balance of two those two records will be printed so here you can see the first are the cautious statements and then f scanf so complete scanf is here you can see f scanf do within brackets f scanf that is we are scanning in the formatted output like within the file there are three records one, uh, three fields one is the account number field second one is the name field and third one is the balance field which are existing in the same line as a record in a file so that particular three records we are saying and what we have to check which thing we have to check again is the balance if at all the balance is zero you can see here in the next statement if at all the balance is zero for the record that we are searching for then it should count the value so or else it will it should display the whole record wherever it encounters the balance is equal to zero the complete record along with the account name and balance will be displayed as the output for this program then comes suppose not line by line or not the in formatted kind of input uh, like uh, real numbers or else uh, characters like kind of thing suppose if you want to read the complete block that is we will be indicating the start point and the end point within the file and then if at all we treat those particular delimits as a block so how to read them there are two functions available that is f read and then f write a block can be a record or else even set of records also or else an array whatever the case may be that is up to you you call it a simple record as a block or else a set of records as a block that is up to the user to make a note and then the functions you have to read in order to uh, like uh, take the block as the input the function is a read and in order to write block as the uh, uh, like block into the file then you have a function called as a write this is the syntax that uh, you have to use void pointer variable buffer integer number of bytes count then file value what all these particular arguments points to let us read in case of f read buffer is the pointer to a memory area that receives the data from the file so it is marking certain area the kind of buffer then f write it is a pointer to the information to be write, written onto the file number of bytes you can see here the second argument int number of bytes that number of bytes specifies the number of bytes to be read or written so that we can call it as a block these functions are quite helpful in case of binary files these are normally used in order to access the binary files generally these functions are used to read write arrays of records that to whatever those are there in the binary form so coming to the file access so till now till this point of discussion we are assuming that everything is in a sequential fashion we are starting right from the point the the file pointer that is the start of the file pointer that is the start of the uh, file and then we are going till end of the file in a sequential way so till now we are assuming that only sequential access is possible which is untrue so there may be a sequential access which can be done obviously whatever we had seen and there may be a random access kind of thing also possible in c programming 
So sequential access files allows reading the data from the file in a sequential manner right from the start till it meets the end of file marker which means that the data can only be read in a sequence. Suppose if you want to go to a particular point that is a random kind of thing that is also point possible. So for that we have certain functions. One function is fseek. This is used to set the file position. So to which point you from which point you have to read or write that fseek is the function we have to set in order to set the position in the available file. So here it consists of three arguments. The first argument is the pointer to a file whatever the file that we are uh, trying to read or write. The second argument is the number of bytes to move the file pointer counting from 0 that is right from the start position to reach to the like the position that we want either it can be moved in a positive direction it is in, in the progressive way or else whether we want to fetch the earlier values. So both the things are possible. So from count 0 the existing position suppose if you treat it as a 0 either it can be positive by moving forward or negative by moving towards the backward from the existing line. So that is meant for the second argument. The third parameter is a flag indicating from where in the file the compute the offset. It can have three values that is 0, 1 or 2. What exactly is the 0 indicates or 1 or 2? The big, suppose if you want to seek or else set to the 0th position that is the beginning of the file indicates 0. The current position is 1 and the end of file is the value that can be given as 2. So here you can see file pointer we had understood, long offset we had seen that from the current position whether to progress or else to go back in the file and then int pos that it will take either 1, 0, 1 or 2. 0, 1 or 2 means either we have to go to the initial position or else current from the current position or else to the end of the file. So these are some of the functions that you can use in order to handle the files in C programming. Before ending this session, let us recap. So in this particular session, what we had seen? We had defined a file. What is the purpose of a file? We had seen that in simple programs, we can ask the values from the users and can execute the program using those values that are being inputted by the user and can display the values what all been like calculated during the program execution. Suppose if you want to work with number of fields or else number of records or else huge data, the source should be a file which will reside on a hard disk or any secondary storage medium. So from those things, we will capture the values from those source that is the files we will capture or else we will take the values into the programming. We will calculate or else the program will be processing those particular data received from the file and then it may write to a file or else it may write to a printer. So among which we had seen there are two types of files we see can work with one is the text file and the other is the binary file and later on we had seen the formatted kind of things like for characters, for strings, for blocks, etc. And then we had seen how to go, how to access the files either in a sequential way or in a random way. If at all it is a random, what kind of function we can use? That is the fseek function we had seen with the three arguments. 
that to way to move how to move or how to set the values for the arguments that we had seen in the random also, random file access with this i hope you understood the file handling in c programming practice the exercises that we had given in your uh, chapter file handling chapter go through the examples work with the check your progress exercises that are been given in the uh, file handling using c programming if at all you are have any doubts please mail me on pgdca@igno.ac.in before concluding please i will once again request uh, to go through all the 12 units that are there in your mcs 011 and then uh, please try to like uh, like uh, do the foundation kind of uh, foundation in this particular c programming very strong so that it will be useful for you in the coming semesters in the second third likewise that to in order to understand various programming languages this is the base or foundation that is been laid lay down for you as the first course so try to concentrate try to do try to practice so that uh, you will have a command good command in programming using c language with this i'll conclude the session thanks for patiently listening to the all these six sessions that we had uh, come across and in the next session i will start mcs 041 the core course on operating systems the students whoever are uh, having uh, the course mcs 022 also can listen to the session from next saturday onwards with this i conclude mcs 011 and i'll start mcs 41 or mcs 22 from the next session onwards thank you happy c programming